Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated. I'm so excited today. I've got model, actress, singer, Kira Santoro. So welcome, Kira. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. <laughs> Are you really excited? I am. I'm always excited. I honestly, I love doing podcasts. So I am actually really very excited. Really? I love the podcast. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's pretty great. That's pretty great. Have you ever done your own? I've never done my own, but you know something, I've thought about it. I think, I think it was just more like the subject, like what am I going to talk about? Because there's yeah. so many things that I'm so interested in. So it would be, what am I going to talk about? Am I going to have guests? Like what kind of guests are those going to be? Right. There has to be sort of like a thesis of your podcast, right? And you got to stick to the... It, it does better if you have a theme, yeah, you know, a subject. Yeah. Maybe... You know, when I'm when I get tired and I just want time off, I'll call you up and be like, guest host. <laughs> oh my god, I would love that. I would actually love that. I would I would do that. So <laughs> yeah. Oh, done, <laughs> done. But we'll have to we'll have to pick someone that would be really shocked when yeah. when you're the host and I'm not there. <laughs> he's like, hey, he's he's tired. He took a time off. He took the day off, and you know what? Now you got me. Now just you got me. We have to, we got to get you the uh, nerdy background. It could be worse. You got me. I got the background, <laughs> but you know, it's so bad. It's not bad. I, I would think I would be a good interviewer. You would be. That's it. You. Next time. When you come back, we'll reverse it. Perfect. And you can, you can interview me. Perfect. I will It'll take that. like eight minutes. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> That's pretty good. Well, thank you so much for, for being on the show. I I like to start here. So you've got a couple of different things going on. But when you when you were first starting out, you know, what made you want to get into entertainment or what made you want to to become a model? How did how did all of that kind of come about? Well, I it's so funny. So I guess the, the first thing I started to do when I was younger was actually acting. I started okay. acting when I was like 10 to 13. And the reason I did it was because my older brother was doing it. And I just wanted to do absolutely <laughs> everything my older brother did. But I was also doing competitive dance as well. So that sort of took priority at that time. And my mom noticed when I was like less into it, she was like, we don't have to go anywhere. And then it wasn't until I was almost 18. I was 17, almost 18, where a lot of people started saying this comment of, you should really, you should try to model. You should try to model. Same, you know, I, same thing happened to me. <laughs> you should try to model. And I said, hmm. And a lot of things in my life have coincidentally happened like that. Like people telling me I should do something and then it's sparking a thing of like, hmm, maybe I should try. And then I yeah. go and try and then I, it happens. So I went and I went to open calls and I got signed and then like I started modeling and then I started modeling a lot. And then I, I got to a point where I was like, I guess now I'm just, I'm modeling. I guess. <laughs> and I really, and I love, and I, I grew a love for it when I was in yeah. it, when I was doing it. And then it was kind of a similar thing where when I was in my modeling career and I told people that I was just modeling, so many people had this reaction like, huh, and you're not acting too? And I'm like, oh no. And they're like, come on weird I really see you as more of an actress like I wouldn't have even paid you as a model and I'm like okay and then and then again another thing just like the right person that was at the right time I was made the right person laugh and they were just like I need you to audition for something <laughs> it's like okay cool anything yeah for sure and now I'm like yeah, now I do modeling, acting, I do music, writing, like I'm script writing right now. That's what I'm doing at six. I'm leaving at six. I have a script writing session with my co-writer. Um, and now I just do like all kinds of like whatever kind of floats my boat that week is like, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do that this week. See, and now I've stuck this whole podcasting thing in your head. Next thing you know, <laughs> and you're thing, adding podcaster in. And then next thing you know, I'm going to be a podcast host as well. Eventually, I would like to be, I would love Jimmy Kimmel's job, eventually. I would love oh, that. yeah. Yeah, I want to do that. I got to see him uh, live for one of his shows. He had uh, Billy Bob Orton, I think, was on there a couple of years back. Oh, it was fun. That. That was yeah, fun. 
it's neat to see behind the curtains, like how they, how they do it. Yeah. You know, it's kind of, kind of, kind of neat. And it's much smaller on the inside than you would expect. You know, when you watch on TV, it looks like I got this just monster audience. It's really kind of compact. They just, everybody's clapping really, really loud, really yeah. hard, clapping really hard. But I feel like I could do that job. Like his you job, could was, I could have that job. And I think I would be really good at it. So who would be, so if you, if you had that job and you could pick anybody to be your sidekick, who would you pick? Oh my God, my sidekick. Um, you gotta have a good sidekick, right? I I know, I know. It's so funny. I don't I don't even know. I guess I've never thought about who would be my sidekick. Mm -hmm. But if I could have like a co-host that I think I would just enjoy, yeah. like we could just vibe really well, Jennifer Lawrence. Really? Yeah, Jennifer Lawrence. I'd watch that show. I just think she's so funny, and I think her and I would like be able to bounce off each other really well. And I just think she, I don't know, just. Yeah. yeah, she's hilarious. Yeah, we're both fire signs. She's a Leo. I'm an Aries. I'm like, we could, we mm. could do this. We could do this, you and I. Let's do it. Yeah. So I didn't realize that the um, astrological signs had, you know, they coincided with like an element. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I'm Scorpio. What's what's my element? You're a water sign. Really? Scorpio is a water sign. Scorpio, Cancer, and Pisces. Interesting. Yeah, I love yeah, Scorpios. I wouldn't have guessed that. I love them. I'm I'm surrounded by Scorpios. I love Scorpios. Well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I'm surrounded like all my friends. This podcast is really starting to pick up now. I have <laughs> obviously picked the right guest host. Oh, thank you, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, so them. so when you were doing competitive dance, because I know a little bit about that. My uh, my oldest daughter uh, was in dance. So so was that like all day competitions like you go to the competitions and you're there like the entire day is that is that what competitive dance is I was for for me in I grew up in LA in the valley and it was more um I was on my school's dance team I was in a dance company and yeah. we would showcase at the end of the year our school's dance team would compete with all the other schools oh so you're on like the school dance team yeah, and I mean, on and on top of that, the dance company was like I was taking jazz, tap, ballet, hip hop, and then I dropped the tap and the ballet, and I stuck with the jazz and hip hop, and and I think I picked up contemporary for a little while too, and then we were doing, you know, that was like after school, yeah. going weekly, multiple days a week, different classes, showcase at the end of the year. So we would. It's a commitment. Yeah, it was like a full blown like. I mean, I was really into it. I still love dancing now. Recreationally for like a workout, I still will go. To <laughs> but well, yeah. so were you were you athletic growing up? Did you do other sports? Yes, very, very extremely. I think just being a Calif a Southern California kid, yeah. For too, and my dad just did so. My my dad just like knew how to do every single sport possible. So he <laughs> taught us like at a young age. I knew how to, I was on a snowboard when I was like four. Ah. I was water skiing. I learned how to wakeboard when I was about seven or eight. Um, I learned how to surf around the same time, like seven or eight. And that was just like, I had a skateboard when I was like 10. And that was like our thing that we would go on these like hiking, camping trips. And we were yeah. like climbing and like, <laughs> all, like all everything that you could think of that's an outside Southern California yeah type thing that you would think in your head people could do I probably know how to do it because I my parents were just like this is what we do this is what we're gonna do and we were yeah, all that's like, pretty that's pretty great yeah that's pretty great yeah you couldn't tell it from looking at me but there is a world-class body surfer right here oh my gosh it's, oh <laughs> it's like I'm not very good at, at much you know there's very little that I can say I'm good at that body surfing though i don't know why I'm, I'm amazing and i and that's just me i'm being modest do they have good beaches out in west virginia no there's no beaches here no, I but we, we travel right we travel so we go so if you're a west virginian 90 percent of us are hanging out at uh, myrtle beach in south carolina that's okay. that's our normal 
Yeah, I knew South Carolina and North yeah. Carolina have like, you know, they, they sort of have, so that's why yeah. I asked, because I thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I said, I know, it's the dumbest skill. <laughs> But I don't need. I don't need a board. I don't need any. Just me. Oh my just, god! I'll tell, let me tell you. I'll tell you a real quick funny story. So, we went to the beach. wasn't too long after uh, my wife and I got to got together. We took a vacation together. Went to the beach, and I'm out there showing off. I'm body surfing. I'm like, oh, this is. I'm, I'm the best. I'm the best. And I caught this wave, and it was like I've been shot out of a cannon. I'm, I'm under the water, and I'm thinking. This is as fast as any human has ever went, ever. And then the next thing I know, I smacked into somebody. Oh, I mean, no. just, and, and I'm under the water and it hurt. It hurt. And I'm thinking, oh, I've, I've, I've killed somebody. It's, it's terrible. I've killed somebody. So I come up out of the water and I had, I had hit my wife right in the stomach. And so she's like, she's gasping for breath. She had the little, the little snot bubbles coming out of her nose. I mean, I totally slobber knocked her. I thought you were going to tell me you had like a coral reef and you were like no. scraped up no. and you had like scratched mm -hmm. your face and you were like, no. had you like, gnarly. oh my God, you just yeah. knocked the wind out of your partner, out of your yeah. woman. And we weren't married yet. And I was like, oh, well, that's, that's the end of that. <laughs> He's like, I'll still take you. I'll still have you. Yeah. Still she hung it. She hung in there uh, with me. Although later when i ran into a very large man that and he didn't move at all but i just folded up like an accordion oh he took a little pleasure in it oh my god you know i couldn't move for a week but i think she kind of liked it <laughs> oh my gosh oh my goodness you're, yeah you've got the beaches out there they're beautiful so cold they're like i wouldn't say they're like beautiful like ah, they're pretty nice there it's i would say that i love east coast well i've never actually been to north or south carolina but i love like the beaches in miami i think are oh stunning. yeah yeah i think mean, that's Those like a cool nice. bathtub water stunning yeah. i feel like yeah the water's so cold here it's, it's cold. i'd rather be in mexico I, i'd rather be well i agree it's not like the bahamas or anything like that yeah i'd rather be in miami. I'd rather yeah it's be nothing like that but it's nice I tried to go out in it, you know, without a wetsuit. I got down about halfway up my thigh, and I couldn't feel my legs. I was like, I don't know how people do this. That's kind of what it felt like when my dad would be, so, like, forcing me to surf when I was 11. I would be in there, and I'm, like, paddling. I catch one or maybe two waves max, and I'm, like, my hands are, like, claws, and I'm, like, Dad, I can't do this. <laughs> I'm just like trying to paddle. My feet are frozen. I'm wearing a full oh, one, yeah. by the way, like a thick one, and I'm still just like, like yeah. lobster. It's hand. Miserable. It's miserable. Can you body surf? I don't. I don't think I can. See, okay, so I don't. I'm going I... to teach you to body surf, but you yeah. have to teach me to actually surf. I've always wanted yeah. to learn, but I've never done it. That's fine. We'll get you on a foamy board. It'll be totally yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's we'll trade. Fun. We'll trade. I don't think we just I'm make sure nobody's in front of us. Yeah. Yeah. Only accident. It is when someone's in front of you, they're really hard to turn. I'm not gonna lie. I had a I had a situation like that over the winter time in December in Costa Rica. I was like on I caught a wave and I was on the phone before. <laughs> and this woman who I love, she's like my my spirit mom. She was like in front of me and I'm trying to turn the board and I'm trying to. <laughs> Like like starfish like jumped off the board yeah. because she was I was gonna hit you her. You can't turn. I can't turn. I couldn't. Yeah, the board is just you know. And I well, wanted, sometimes when you're going, like somebody will try to get out of your way, and the wave will take you right at them again. It's like know. it knows. <laughs> I wanted a different board. I requested a different kind of board, but they only had like the place that we went to only had like a bunch of foamy boards. I wanted like a hard top twin fin and they were just like, they don't, I was like, okay, whatever, I'll do it. And then I'm like on this foamy board. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like trying to turn, no carving, none, none. And it was just not, not my best moment. I jumped off. <laughs> I was like, Whoa! they got is video there footage. Yeah. Is there video? Yes. They got video of me doing that. And it was a good, it was a nice little giggle for everyone to have. It was just yeah. me jumping bailing off the board <laughs> yeah. at least you didn't hurt anybody no i didn't hurt any that i would have i would have ran right over her too she was just right in the way i, I would have gone over her like 
just uh, not yeah. <laughs> that's terrible. That's terrible. So, so you started modeling and you did some work with Sports Illustrated. I did. I remember that. It's been a few years back, right? Yes. So, uh, yeah, that was like a pretty big, I mean, not a pretty big, that I would say for my modeling career, that was like the, just such like a pivotal moment for me. Because well, yeah, was, of course. I, it was everything that I had worked for so hard. So like I said, I, people just kind of told me that I should start modeling. <laughs> people just said, you should model. And I said, you should okay. do it. <laughs> and then as I started to do it and I started to really start like enjoy it and really like it, I yeah. started setting goals and I was writing them down and I was like, oh, you know what? I'd really like to do this. And I started doing a lot of swim modeling. And then I was like, okay, well, the like top tier of swim modeling is Sports Illustrated. Like that's what that is. And so I was like, that's what I want. I want that. And yeah. so everything that I worked for up to that point was to get there. So I was just every single swim shoot, every swim campaign, every single, and I was for a while, like, I mean, I was that swim girl, I was just like every single, I was doing swim weeks in Miami, every single brand pretty much at some point or another has yeah. me their campaigns or like a billboard or whatever. And I made sure my New York agency knew every time I said, when that casting comes around, I want to be in there. Like I, that's what I want. I want to right. be in there very clear to everybody. I said, that is what I want. <laughs> and so one year came around where I realized like the casting was going on and I had asked them, I said, Hey, you guys, why am I not, you know, it was like the year before. I'm like, why am I not, why am I not there? And they're like, Oh, you know, okay. We tried to submit, but it's too late. They've already like kind of pick everyone, blah, 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 blah. I was heartbroken. I was gutted. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to keep working. And then next year I'm going to make sure that I know this time of year is when they cast. And then it happened again. And I got the casting. I said, and I told my agents, I said, if you just get me in the door, I will sell myself. If you just, right. just get me in the door, okay? That's all I need you guys to do. <laughs> I can do this. Like, I can do this. And so they did. They got me in the door. And I got the casting. And I didn't hear anything for about a month. And okay. so I kind of was like, I was still working so much at that point. So I just was like, okay, may the universe be ever in my favor. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> this is my dream. Like, I love you universe. Like, please, you know what I want? Like, you know what I want? And so a month goes by and my agent calls me and says that they, they've uh, asked for my availability and they have me on hold, which is like oh. a hold. They can like release a hold or they can right. push through for an actual booking. So they said hold. And I remember being on the phone. I was like, Oh my God. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh my God. And, and he was like, Hey, calm down. Let's just like calm down until they call you in and say, we've actually booked it. Like, let's just, you know, pump yeah. the brakes, pump the brakes. <laughs> and the fact that they love me enough to put me on hold is like enough for me to be excited. Cause that's how bad I just, it's pretty exciting. Off. Yeah. It was exciting. I just wanted this thing so bad. And the fact that I was like, even in the running and consideration for it, you know, it was just like, wow. And so then I get a call about a week later saying that I got it. This is my flight info. This is my, all my stuff. And I was in the Apple store with my old roommate and I started just like crying. In the Apple store. <laughs> it's like, it was like, it wasn't even, there wasn't even a moment for, to build up of the crying. It was literally the phone call. He said, you got it. I'm emailing over your flight info. And it was like immediate waterworks in the Apple store. I was going to say, did they, did oh, Apple goodness. store employees come to see what was wrong? We were with we were with a store employee. I was with my <laughs> mall, and literally, he was like, "Oh my god, is she, it, like, is she okay?" And my roommate knew what it was. She said she just booked her dream job, and he was awesome. like, "Oh my god!" And I hung up the phone. He was like, "Congratulations, what was your dream job?" And I was like, "Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue." And he was like, "Wait, what? I thought the dream job was gonna be like some like you know like something out of like." I, and he right. was like He's like, you just book sports illustrated. Like the guy even was like, oh my God, what like who am I standing with right now? Like, what is that? <laughs> I called my mom. I called my boyfriend at the time. I called my 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 mom told my whole family. And I just and then like I went, you know, me and my boyfriend at the time, my roommate, we went to the celebrate. We like went out to eat and yeah, of course. And, and yeah, like a week later I left and I shot it and I couldn't tell anyone. You can't tell anybody when you shoot it either. You can't really? tell anyone. Yeah. Well, now they do it a little different, but back when I did it, they would 
they would post a picture of just like bodies and be like, guess who's gonna be in? <laughs> so they're just like posting pictures of like my body. <laughs> and people guessed in the comments and there were so many people like specifically with mine and I guess because I was doing so many swim campaigns up to that yeah. point so much swim work that people literally knew exactly what my body looked like really yeah like how it's a little weird that's a, that's a little creepy <laughs> I'm flattered but a little creepy um, there's pictures where I'm literally cropped to here right you can only see like yeah. collarbones and like my body down to my like knees in like a bathing suit and just so many comments like, I know who that is at Kira Santoro. I know who that is, Kira Santoro. Oh my God, this looks like Kira Santoro. That's pretty oh neat, God, actually. Santoro. And it was like overwhelming, like agents literally were like, I know that's you, Kira. I know that's you. And I'm like, no, no, no. You can't, like, yeah, you can't say it. <laughs> like my New York agents knew, but I had London, Miami, LA. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like not telling anybody. And then. <laughs> And then it came out and it was like this, this big thing. It was like a whirlwind. We had like a fan festival in New York and Miami. And it was like signings and like events and like all this crazy stuff. All this and, stuff. Yeah. And then I actually shot for them a second time too. It was like online only. And yeah. that was also flattering that they even wanted to work with me again. The same exact year I literally, and the same year I shot for Max in Mexico. So like both of those things came out a couple That's months amazing. before. Yeah, it was like I was like a full spread of in, <laughs> uh, and like a full spread in Sports Illustrated, like four months apart. I was just like <laughs> all off of people telling me, "Hey, I think you should model." <laughs> <laughs> well, just think what you could do as a podcaster. <laughs> I think you should do that, and I'm just like, it was crazy. It was it was that's, like, that's, that's, that's amazing. That's an amazing story. Amazing. Where where was the shoot when when they flew you out? Where did you go? Uh, the Dominican Republic. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Very nice. So when they have, when they put you on hold, are you getting paid for that? Or you no. still just have to wait? You still just have to wait. The hold yeah. is just making sure that you are available those dates and that they're for sure going to pull the trigger and book you. So it's just like, hey, can we hold? Because we shot, I shot it in October. So they said, can we hold, you know, October 5th through the 20th or whatever, right. you know, and I was so like, have you, have you ever been on hold and then it fell through? Oh my God. So many times, so many really? times, so many things for, I wouldn't like that. Yeah. It, it's kind of, it's kind of a part of just the industry in general, because I've been put on for, for modeling, it's called hold, but for right. acting, it's called veil, like for a commercial you're put on veil. Uh, yeah. or they pin you for a role, right. and really, you know, it's between you and one other person. And I've had that happen with probably 95% of commercials I've auditioned for. I, really? It, that, that high? Yeah. My, my percentage ratio for getting put on hold for commercials is very high. I've done a couple commercials, but like the actual booking of them, I'm like, you guys, <laughs> <laughs> point, you all know what I look like. I'm just like, I don't, I get put on hold for almost every single commercial that I audition for. And I, I mean, get, how does that feel though? I mean, how do you deal with that? Cause I'm guessing it's not like you've had a life full of rejection. That, that's probably hard. I feel like I have pretty thick skin. So I, yeah. and I also have like a way of compartmentalizing it in my brain that I know. So, especially for the acting stuff, like when I get put on hold for an acting thing that I really want, whether it's like a show or a movie, and I get, I, I try to not overdo my excitement the way that I did with the SI thing. The SI thing, I was just so grateful to even be considered. Now with the acting and the commercial work, I really know how to like go, okay, if it's meant to be, this is going to be, because it comes down to things that I can't really control. Like it comes down to the tone of your voice or, you know, maybe the girl looks a little more ethnic than I do, or maybe they wanted a whiter girl than me, or maybe, you know, it's like little things like that where you just can't, it's can't like control. the character was written as a redhead and they found a girl that was a redhead and they're like, oh, but we really like Kira's audition. Mm, let's veil her. And then they, they watch the two and they're like, oh, we're just going to go with the redhead because we really wanted a redhead, you know, right. it's little things like that where you just yeah. can't even, like there's, there's nothing you can do. Yeah. It's there's nothing, it's nothing based on your ability. No, it's not personal. So I'm just like, what, yeah. what's 
for me will be mine you know it will, that will be mine it's okay you know so I'm i've just... got i've got a good friend that was um a, an actress through the 90s and she was the actress that was when it was down to the final two for the role that jennifer aniston got on friends she was the other one with that and she talks about that she had a hard time getting over that one i would never <laughs> I would, I, oh my god because yeah. that's something that oh my you know, at the time you're just thinking oh, it's just no no big deal but then that, that was the role that was the role <laughs> that was the role yeah yeah, yeah. and she so. and she she had a a very good career has done done wonderful and stuff but i know that one still that one still bugs her a little bit i'm sure it still does thing but it's just you know jennifer aniston is like america's sweetheart she's like our yeah. hero she's just you know that was I, know. I think that was meant for her it's like it that. was you know it was i mean once you watch the show i mean who else was going to be rachel Nobody. no yeah no one else was going to be rachel i mean that was like she's somebody that i think America, we identify. She's like she's one of those actresses or actors that you know. There's certain people that we just identify with. They're like our, sure. you know, they're like our people, and it's like Jennifer Aniston is just one of them. She's one. Um, Did you watch the Friends reunion? I would. I d haven't. Did it come out? Yeah, it's out. It's um, on HBO. Oh on well, because I have HBO. Shout out to my mama. I got HBO. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> but, that was like a show that my mom would watch all growing up. It was like Friends. Oh, yeah. Like it was always just, it was that and Grey's Anatomy were like my mom's two shows. Grey's she, Anatomy's been on for like 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, but it hasn't like everyone died and everything. And yeah. They've, yeah. They've turned over the most of the cast, I think. And then now it's like all new people, right? So it's not, yeah. you know, it was like the original. Is your mom still watching? That's the show you need to get on. Yeah, no, she doesn't still watch anymore. I would love to get on another show because I loved working. I loved working on the Orville. I like loved. I would love to get on another. Well, show. Well, yeah, talk about talk about that one a little bit because it's coming back. Yeah, so, so we just wrapped season three, and it took a very very long time to film season yeah. three. I'm not gonna lie, because it was you know between COVID and just everything, like the how large the actual production is. Right. Uh, one of the I know it's one of the larger shows on the Fox lot so I don't know if it's the largest but I know it's one of the larger ones and it was just the regulations that Seth wanted in place for the show made it yeah. Disney kind of was it was a little slow for us to get back started there was other shows that were already back filming and we were kind of like one of the last ones to to get back started which was crazy and unfortunate but uh yes. we got it done <laughs> so it is done so they're aiming for next year release february i believe february I'm pretty yeah sure. i think that's what i heard was was february yeah. I think it's it not soon enough as a fan you're like come on yeah it's it's so crazy because the fan base for the orville is such this like dedicated it's like a very niche fan base but they're just like yeah. so dedicated is people that just love star trek and they love comic-con and they love like and just like the space and the aliens and the and they love <laughs> and, like the comedy and the dramedy and it's just like there's so much you know love for the it's, fan base of that show. It's a, yeah it's such a great show will your will we see your ensign get promoted this season yes really yes i was just kind of half serious but that's exciting yes she is it. So what what is next? Are you a lieutenant now? Yes. Ooh. <laughs> well, forget forget sports. An extra, an extra stripe on my on my yeah. shirt. Yeah. Yeah, that's way bigger deal than you know. Yeah, I. Uh, I don't want to say too much because I don't want anyone to give that. No, you don't want to give anything away. Things I mean, I want to know everything, but you don't want. Yeah, to. I'm sprinkled quite a bit more in. Um, I mean, I remember the first season. It was just like this sort of. I, I had originally auditioned for Alara, which was Halston Sage's part. Yeah. So I had originally auditioned for Halston Sage's part. That was my original, my original. You look good in that role. Thank you. That was my original, original audition. And it was one of the, the casting director just really liked me. And she thought that I was really 
funny and very animated and she liked the way I talk and I was totally just strictly modeling at that point and I had I I was doing commercial work and auditioning that way but I wasn't actually acting at all and she was like I need you to she was the one that was like I need you to audition for this and I was like okay yeah (laughs) all right I have to see on camera I just need to see how you read I need to see like I just need to just for myself you know and so she had me audition for that part and then the next day I had texted me she's like oh my god your audition was so good like you did so amazing I can't believe you just have like the natural ability to act what what are you doing how are you just modeling like you need to be doing this and I'm like oh okay I guess I'm supposed to be doing this thing too (laughs) sure (laughs) sure I accept and so then I auditioned for that and then they told me like a couple weeks later oh we ended up going with somebody else um but it was so good we're going to keep you in mind for another role in the season and I yeah, said that's great okay. okay totally forgot about it because they filmed I mean I'm sure if you saw the first season they filmed the, an entire season right and they called me like the last day like the last week and they said we have a part for you. Can you come in tomorrow? Can you film tomorrow? Like we have a part. It's a couple lines. Da, 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 da. Like, what are you sag? Like, what's your thing? You know, I was like, oh my God. I was like, well, yeah, I'll come film tomorrow. Like for sure. And I did my one little cameo part in season one in the last episode. And that last episode got so much like, yeah, that scene got so much hype and people loved it. And they're like, who's this girl? Like, who's her character? Oh my, we need to see more of her. <laughs> We got to see more of her. We like her. Like, who is she? Like, does she have a name? And then I I was getting write-ups. Like, I remember I was getting, like, if if I Googled myself at that time, it was like, model Kira Santoro makes her acting debut in the Orville. Mind (laughs) you, you didn't have a publicist. No no one had nobody on the payroll to do that for me at all. And I was like, this is kind of crazy. This is kind of cool. Yeah. And then season two, they called me again. They're like, yeah, we're having you back. You're going to, you know, you're going to be in a little bit more. We're going to have you back. And I was like, okay. And then I did more episodes season two. And then season three, they're like, you're coming back. And this time you're promoted. I was like. That means we'll get to see you on the bridge. Yeah. I, I'm still in engineering. I'm still in engineering. Well, okay. Engineering's okay. That's, that's, that's a good, if you can't be on the bridge, engineering's the next best thing. I'm still an engineering girl. I'm just promoted within the engineering yeah area but i'm Very still exciting. an engineering girl so i'm still i would have loved to have been on the bridge i've only actually been up there a couple times like there was an episode where we did a party up there and yeah. i remember when i was shown when they like sort of updated it and I, i've really only been to the bridge probably like three or four times in my whole life ever in all the seasons and all of it like because <laughs> now they're on two different stages at oh time. right Okay. So there's totally different stages. So when I'm coming to work, I'm working on a stage all the way over here. And then that other stage all the way on the other end of Fox Lot is the bridge. So it's like, I, I don't even get to just mosey on up there and hang out. You know, it's like, it's, a, it's its own, yeah. it's its own thing in, on Fox. So well, what happens if you're in a scene in both places? They just got to wait on you to get over to the other place. <laughs> yeah it's usually like they have it pretty good they're very they're 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 tight schedules yeah. they're tight schedulers over there they really know how to they really know how to do the if we're shooting multiple scenes in one day like they have people and they need extras and aliens and stuff it's like these people are here for this time and then we have to go and then and then we're going to take all the people over here and then only the people that need to be over there especially with the covid guidelines and the covid restrictions there's a lot of you know everything has to be very proper now yeah that's that's kind of neat do you have your own trailer yes nice yes does it have your name on it it says it says instant turco on it <laughs> that's even better yeah it says instant turco on it so it's 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 fun i like how I, my my trailer too is like right next to everybody so my trailer is like right next to jay lee's and scott's and everyone yeah. so we all kind of hang out outside of our trailers especially if it's a very nice day and we've been inside the stage for hours and hours and hours. We'll just hang out and talk outside. And um, I became really close with Jessica Zor. She was, she probably became my oh, best yeah. on set. Yeah. I became like really close with Jessica, Jaylee, and Scott. I became very, very close with all three of them. Oh, that's They're great. Amazing to work with also. Seth is yeah. amazing to work with. He's an amazing director. 
I mean, everybody's just so like, everyone's easy to work with too. Everyone's very like on it. So that's pretty good. great. I mean, that's yeah. what you want. You want to be comfortable. And yeah. Just feel, feel like you're, you're part of something. I agree. Like, uh, yeah. That's pretty great. Have you gotten a chance to do any conventions yet? Any, any what? Any conventions. Any like uh, Comic Cons? No. Yeah, that's unfair. That's the uh, COVID. Screw I, that up. Oh, I know. I wish. I would love to just to experience it because I've never actually been to one ever for any it's other. Crazy. People. Yeah. They it's get to go. Fun. A couple of the mains get to go, and they do all kinds of stuff. They sign things, and they and it seems yeah. like it's fun and I would like like to experience it once in my life but maybe I'll do another project or if they do a season four and I'm like promoted again you know there's for whatever reason you know I would love to experience that but um yeah you need to you, maybe we need to bring we, we've we've just started having decent size ones here in West Virginia we need to bring you here yeah that's it you've probably never been to West that. Virginia I've never Virginia yeah. See, we need to bring you here. I will I will be the guy that just collects the money. <laughs> You'll be just... like, hey, get back behind that line. Twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. Twenty dollars an autograph. Let's go. Come on, line up. <laughs> yeah. No I pictures. Love... No pictures. You pay for those. <laughs> uh, I also in general just have such like a peak interest to go to sort of those areas of the East Coast because I've been to New York and Chicago. Yeah. I've Minneapolis. I've been obviously like south of Florida, Miami. I've never been, need to come through here. I've never been to either of the Carolinas. Totally want to go. Mm -hmm. I've never been to um, New Orleans. Dying to go. I've never been to Atlanta, Georgia. Dying to go. There's so many places over there. I am yeah. in Nashville, Tennessee. There's so many places. I'm like, ah, you got to do that. I know. I'm gonna get you out. I know. I know. We got. Um, I got to go to New Orleans. Uh, my college roommate was the police sergeant on Bourbon Street. And I got to spend a Halloween uh, there on Bourbon Street. When it was the best. Wow. I mean, it, was, it would have been great just by itself. But being there and having someone that actually knows where what is happening when, you know, so we got kind of escort that. It was, it was, that should you know, definitely and I feel like October is a good time to go there, too, because yeah. it's you know, it's just that, ho that Halloween essence, that fall Halloween essence. It's I very mean, artsy. You know, if you like art and music, I mean, it's just really a really great place. And it's October is also a good time to come through West Virginia because all the leaves change color. Get the foliage. I need, to, I need to just explore more of the America yeah. in general. I've gone outside of America and I've like been so privileged and grateful to have gone, you know, to different places. Like I've been to Indonesia and like in South America and I've been to Europe, but I'm like, I haven't actually just taken the time to explore enough of the country I live in, you yeah. know? There's so. your podcast. You travel the country and then you just interview locals at each, you know, locale that you stop at. I've had an idea about that, but like for video content for YouTube. yeah, like for YouTube. Yes, yeah, and like eat at food places and interview local yes. people. Have them show me what you know, and have it just be like a full on thing. Oh, that'd be great. You should yeah. do that. Yeah, and so people can see, you know, and I have I have a bigger a bigger interest of actually pitching like a show, which I feel like I actually should give this idea away because someone else might take yeah. it. I'm not going to give it away. It's a show. You're going to be like, that damn podcaster from West Virginia stole my show. No, like, <laughs> the show, pitching a show to, like, an actual network that's something yeah. similar to that. But I'm not going to say yeah, exactly yeah. what it is. But it's yeah, you want to hold the details. Yeah. Just in case. Details. Yeah, I'm, I'm an overshare, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That sound, I think it's a great idea. I'll, I'll do it. Yeah. yeah. I'll do it. I'll come through West right. Virginia. Yeah, you have to come through West Virginia. I you got to, because our studio is right on Main Street. You make a stop here. We can take you to the local restaurants. It'll be great. We'll take you out to the, uh, you know, see the, uh, West Virginia is big on the outdoor stuff. So you've done rock climbing and all that stuff. So we'll take you to that, whitewater rafting, all that stuff. The things that speak to my heart. That's I right. Will, I will be there. I will be That's there. It. All right. Everyone has That's that. It. It's a done deal. Yeah. Everyone Season has one. 
accessibility too. So they'll go and show you, you know, it's like people are still, I feel like at least that's the reputation that I know. I don't know yeah. from experience, but people are just much friendlier and like willing to help you and absolutely and all the things. <laughs> <laughs> if I was on a show, like if I had a role on a science fiction show, being a nerdy person, they that's all I'd ever need. I would never need to act in another show and I would, they wouldn't even have to call me and invite me to conventions. I just show up in uniform. I just be popping up. They'd be like, Oh my gosh, there's that Turco guy again. He's just oh. hanging out here. I know I could, I I'm sure if I asked as well, if I, if I said, Hey, you know what you guys, I actually want, I have interest to go to Comic Con. I'd like to go. They would oh, yeah. let me. They would and, you, like, and you got the good ones out there. You got San Diego, some of the big ones. Out there. That's the one they go to. They go yeah. to the San Diego one. And it's, yeah, I think just a couple of them. Is, I don't think everyone, I don't think it's everyone's favorite thing to do, but I would just do it because I want to experience it. Yeah, you need to do it. Yeah. No, it's a fun time. I mean, at, fans can be a little much at times, but the majority of them, very nice, very respectful. It's just, it's just fun. You know, they just want that couple of seconds with the people that they like to you know is a memory it's I don't know, it's nice i mean i've experienced definitely like so much weird even just with modeling with people you know just yeah. like weird, weird fan stuff in general i've experienced weird things and like discomfort or like people like pushing the you know yeah. like even just to want a picture like even going to a music festival and someone spots you and they want a photo i've had people just not like inappropriately but yes the word is inappropriately like <laughs> grab me yeah that's, they, that's not cool they think they know me and i'm like i love that you love me so much but like we actually don't know each other like i've never met you i don't know you i've never seen your face and people will like grab you and be like oh come take a picture with me and you're just like yeah 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 that's not cool because yeah. it's very and then if you if you act upset then then you get that. they'll tell everyone that you're yeah. the worst person they've ever met you're so rude you're you that's know awful yeah and so it's uh, the reputation does come into play of like being very cautious of you know well you have to you have yeah. to but you also deserve your own time and space yeah you know and they should at least ask just ask would it yeah. be okay if i took a picture and maybe it's a no you don't always want a picture I know I've had well I always say yes but I've had all kinds of interesting things I've had like someone show up uh, like I've had it twice someone show up at a restaurant that I was at because I posted where I was eating or whatever and they like walk up to the table asking for a picture and I'm like that's a little weird yeah. gotta not post where I'm eating I guess because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know we weird. gotta wait till you leave yeah like mm -hmm. wait exactly and so waiting till I leave and I'm like I don't even like look at myself as like some kind of celebrity but it's just like you can't even post your yeah. food and without somebody you know showing up it was a little a little odd and walking around a music festival is you know people are like very grabby because yeah. they, want, they don't want you to get away so i think that's, that's like right. i get the thought process they don't want you to get away because it's like so chaotic and so much going yeah. on and walking around, they're like yeah hey, and they like grab you i understand you know i can like oh. get it that's nice of you to understand but that's still it's yeah that's that's an important yeah, I guess I signed up for Well, a little, but nobody deserves that. Yeah. You know, there's 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 the right way and the wrong way. Yeah. I appreciate that. I appreciate it though, because I actually like because when they tell me something super specific, they're like, yeah. especially now that I've done so many other things, like when I've dabbled into music, people coming up to me and saying, Oh, I really love this song that you made. Like yeah. big fan, but also by the way, I listen to this song all the time. I'm like, what i'm like no way that one well no yeah so you know, let's talk about let's talk about the music for just a little bit what yeah. what so uh, let me tell you I, i'll tell you this because there's there's a surefire way that i'm able to tell if somebody is actually a good singer <laughs> right so it never fails it never fails so I play the music for the grandkids. So the grandkids, they're a year, year and a half, two years old. So they're young. If they dance, it's good. If they just wander off, it may not be very good. So I can tell you, I played, um, let me think. 
forever down. Ooh. Lots of dancing. My granddaughter, especially. She was bouncing all over the room. Ooh, forever down. That was like so I love that song because it was such like the production on it. I feel like we really worked so hard. I sat down with my producer and we really worked on this like super vibey. Like we almost made it like, what is that? What is that one band? I don't know why I'm blanking on that band. Um, who's that they go? They sing that song. Eh. Oh, who is that? Oh, um, it'll come to me. It'll come to me. Yeah, yeah you know. Yeah, what yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It I does see. have that kind of. It's yeah. It's it's a uh, it's catchy. We like gave it's got it a real good beat with it. Yeah, we gave it the essence of that band, like that old kind of just like you know. A lot of people really like Virgo Boy too. Virgo Boy is like very like. Virgo Boy is really good. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a very sweet and guitar and like nice and just very vibey and it's really like soft and you know um I paused on music so hard too with just I guess because of filming and I got a little busy yeah there's just so many other things too and like when I have a lot of shoots and I'm and then I'm on the I mean do you plan do you plan to do an album at some point or an EP yeah, I feel like eventually I will. I actually just started working on music again. I mean, I cut so I cut probably thirty demos last year during the pandemic. Oh, wow. I had nothing to do. And yeah. I just recently started. I just recently started going through them again and being like, "Whoa, this one's really good. I can't believe I never did anything with this." Or like, oh, <laughs> "I'm just starting to like go through them again and and figure out which ones because I'm gonna start releasing music again." I uh, also to plug myself more. Yeah, of I course. have um, a poetry book that I'm getting, currently I'm getting the cover art. No, you don't. Yeah, I'm getting the cover art currently right now. She just sent me some samples today. Great. Up for my poetry book. So that will be coming out sometime, probably this year, I would say by like November. Do you have a name? Uh, yes, right now. So right now I had two names, but she liked this other one more. And it's funny enough because it was the one that I sort of left on the page. Yeah. Uh, but it's called Be Gentle. My heart is in here. Oh, I love that. I love that. So are they, are they romantic poems? A lot of like, I would say they're not happy. It's not happy romantic. It, it, there's a lot <laughs> heartbreak of, like, is what you're talking about. Yeah. A lot of heartbreak or like even and I started writing on these poems that you know years ago probably like five years ago six years ago and yeah. I just took all my favorite ones and I put them all together in a collection and I put them into three separate separate um parts in the book so the first part yeah. is break whether it's me feeling bad about something you know breaking up with somebody that I knew that liked me but maybe I was in the right space and things like that and right. then um or somebody hurting me hurting my heart and then uh, the next part has to do uh, with grieving because I've dealt with the, the passing of my father a couple of years ago. And so I wrote a lot of poems about that and about him. Yeah. And then part three of the book has to do with uh, the depression and insomnia that I suffered with within the time that he was sick and within the time that he passed. So it was all very, I mean, the book itself is like super healing for me. And so I'm I was hoping- gonna say it was cathartic. Right. It was very, yeah, it was like an artistic way to flow out these emotions that I was feeling very overwhelmed with. And so I'm hoping that it in turn also helps someone else. I think the book, since it's not happy, it's probably not going to be for everybody, but anybody that's dealt with heartbreak, grieving, or any sort of like mental health issues is going, I think it's really going to touch those people. So, yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I had no idea. So, so are you writing your own music as well? Yeah, all of it, one hundred percent of it, all written by me. Also, that, co that's amazing. Also, co-produced yeah. every single song I have out. <laughs> well, so you've got a you've got a beautiful voice, but that's that's amazing that you're you're talented in so many artistic areas. Do you paint? Um, I that's you know that's something that I was good at in high school in my art class in high school, but it's something I never carried yeah. through. I, I like, I feel like I feel and think in colors and I have like a very artistic eye and I know what yeah. I like and I know, and I know what I like and I know when I see something and I know when I hear something, I'm I like, I know what I like and I like what I like, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so, for sure. Painting was something that I never carried further. I was definitely a big doodler. I doodled. <laughs> I still know how to do that really well. Like just black and white, like doodling. Yeah. I, know how to make like a very abstract interesting picture but it's all just doodle art it's not really 
you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's still though, even if it's just something for you. Yeah. That's, 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 that's pretty neat. How about um, fashion? Have you, have you done anything with clothing? I, at one point, surrounding a couple of songs, I made like a small drop of merch. So it was just like yeah. hoodies and stuff like that. And that was something I wanted to get involved in, but I think it's, I feel like, and I could be wrong, but I personally felt like with merch, I had to dedicate a lot of time to it. And right. There's certain, it's more complicated than you think. It's a lot harder than people think. Yeah. And you really have to like be on top of certain things and trends and colors and fonts. And there's so much stuff that's kind of involved that people don't realize when it comes to stuff yeah. like that. So I did a small drop of hoodies and they were fine. I did some hats and, and then it was, uh, and then COVID had happened. And actually the company that I was using to supply this stuff and print it for me, yeah. they, were they didn't go out of business but they they had to drop basically every single store that wasn't like their most profitable because it was oh, like yeah so they had they they were they were doing like ariana grande's merch and like eminem and like people like oh, wow. that and then they were doing like some youtubers and some like yeah. music some smaller music people and they sort of dropped everybody that wasn't in their like top tier thing yeah. i understood i was like okay well i'm not making you guys like you know millions of dollars off my merch so like i get it you know I'm right, just, right. You guys little, not yet yeah like such a small fraction compared to ariana grande like let's yeah. be real you know so I, was like, I get it i'm not even offended whatever and it was something that if i wanted to continue doing i think i would have had to dedicate a lot of time and last year I was dedicating quite a bit of time to like learning how to record myself mix my own vocals right. <laughs> Yeah, kind that's of, kind of important. If you're going to sing, that's kind of important. Yeah, so I was learning because I, I couldn't, I walked into a room and I couldn't tell any producer, I couldn't tell a producer how I wanted to sound, but I would sit there and say, I'm going to sing it like this. I don't know what key that is, but I'm going to sing it like this and it's going to be right. a tempo and this is how I'm going to do it. And And that was like, and then I would say for the beats, I like, the synth from this song I like the drum beat from this song I like the guitar from this song and I like the harmonies from this song and like this is the vibe that we're going to create and these are the yeah. lyrics and so like let's sit down and make a beat together and I, I just had to communicate as best I could but then I actually learned how to uh, record myself figure out what keys I'm singing in and, and do a light neat. yeah and do a light mix of my own vocals so I could send an idea and say this is what we're gonna do this but it's gonna be better when we get together and yeah so i dedicated a lot of time to that last year yeah. and, and also writing a lot of my poetry too i wrote uh i wrote quite a bit of some of the stuff last year that's going to be in the book so i was kind of more focused on that i feel and so the merch was just like is this you know do i want to go full force with this or do i want to sort of do these other things and i guess it was yeah. the other things one so yeah you know. <laughs> Well, you've got time. You don't have to do everything right at the same time. Yeah, I feel like, you know, I I try to stick with, I try to really listen to myself and listen to my gut and my soul and like whatever's feeling good at that moment and whatever feels like it's in flow, like I'm not forcing something. Right. That's usually what has the best outcome for me personally. Like it's always just been sort of the universe will kind of give me like an invitation. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. And I follow through and the second it starts getting a little too friction. I'll keep pushing because I'm like, oh, is this, am I about to have a breakthrough? But if it, the pushing continues, I, I pull back. I'm like, this isn't the right time for this right now. Yeah, this I think that's, yeah, that makes sense to me. I think, I think that's smart. How about yeah. um, an instrument? Do you play an instrument? So I don't play an instrument. I started to learn simple basic chords on a piano last year. Yeah. So I help myself. But I would like to learn guitar. My dad knew how to play guitar and I just yeah. feel like, really like to learn how to play guitar because that would be so cool to just bust out well, yeah guitar. i know i know i wish i could play <laughs> like, it'd be amazing even, even if it's just you sitting around you know yeah. nobody around that'd be cool yeah so i would really like to learn guitar i would also like if someone had a piano in their house and i just like totally knew how to play piano I just, I, that i feel like that could be the most impressive skill that i could bring out of <laughs> party trick that any of my like very few friends know is that they know how to play piano really well i'm like Dude, you wow! Yeah, that's a, I know it's a talent. My uh, my yeah. stepson plays by ear, 
and he can pick up any instrument if you give him a minute or two he can play it i mean it's Aren't amazing amazing yeah kids are amazing yeah. their brains are incredible kids are incredible like i am i think kids are just the coolest they're the yeah coolest. no for sure yeah it's amazing what they uh, can accomplish and they don't think it's a big deal they're like eh. yeah well, whatever yeah, yeah no whatever. They say silly things. They learn things so fast. They're so interesting. They're so fascinating to talk to. They're still so like pure and innocent. They look at the world in such like a beautiful way. And I just I know. Think, when do we lose that? Yeah, we lose it. We get so like jaded and like hearted and yeah. conditioned by life. And then you're like, why well, don't know why am I not like this? <laughs> innocence and like the, the innocence and the love for everything and the fascination of everything. And it's just like, uh, it's so beautiful because they're just, the raddest. I just think they're so cool. They're so neat. Yeah. Because all they do is all they do, well, especially when they're real little, all they do is love. I know. They're happy all the time. And they just any any time that you spend with them, they love it. I know. I know. I, know. I love it. <laughs> Think about animals. Animals. Maybe, too. maybe we could do a podcast where we just interview kids. I feel like I need to write that down because that's such a good idea. That's just, pretty good, right? Like, and you just talk about whatever they want to talk about. Wow, that's such a good idea. I know this program on YouTube called Cut. They do a thing. They do a thing, and sometimes it is videos with kids where they'll ask yeah. kids about something you know that you would think as an adult, oh, they don't know anything about that, and you're so fascinated by these answers, or like if the kids get emotional, <laughs> what they start talking about, yeah. like. How do you associate anger or something, you know, the awesome something or like how they associate animals or, and it's just so amazing how much they really do know. That would be. I tell you, there you go. Yeah. I mean, the Don't cut me out now if you take that one. No, I won't. No, I need to go with six year olds and seven year olds and eight year olds. I think that's such a amazing age for kids, first of all. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That, to me, a very special. My uh, my granddaughter, she's not quite two yet, but we were we were out uh, to dinner, and there was a boxing match on the overhead TV, and she started pointing at the TV and yelling, "No, no, me!" Or stop, it was stop, no, me. <laughs> yeah, it was just boxing. It was just a boxing match. I'm she like, said, yeah. She said, "This is too violent." <laughs> yeah, it's too violent. No, stop that. <laughs> stop that. Yeah, no. stop that. Um, <laughs> I was like, yeah, well, she's right. Yeah, they should stop that. It's not that off. <laughs> I feel like I want to come to West Virginia because it's just been so, like, I just want to meet, like, I want to meet all these children because this conversation's yes. been so great. Like, just well, also, oh. such a great vibe. So I'm just like, I'm just going to come visit. I'm just going to come hang Please out. Please do. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, put, we'll put you up in the, we'll put you up in the studio. We'll just, you can have the run of it. Oh, well. <laughs> I'll take it. I'd love to come because I assume everybody, if everybody's as friendly and like sweet as you are, I think it's just going to be, I think I would love to go and like be immersed in that, in that energy. I think it would be. Yeah, nice. you should. And it, and thankfully the majority of the people are just extremely kind. It's, it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful state. You know, it's, it's a poor state, but the people are just wonderful and they'll, and they'll give you whatever they have, you know, whatever they can do. You gotta come visit. I will. That's so, okay. So, so I know we got. I know we got to wrap up. Oh, you mentioned that that you dance sometimes for exercise. What else do you do to to stay in shape? Oh my gosh, I've been getting asked this quite a bit recently, but um, it's funny because I've stopped. I think COVID, I sort of stopped working. Oh, messed us all up. It sounds really bad, but like, but I do like, I walk every single day. So I have a dog right. and who's up from her nap now and she wants to play. I thought but, I heard, I thought I heard her. What kind of dog is she? Yeah. She's an Australian shepherd mixed with a Shiba Inu. Oh, okay. That's very I, fancy. Very cute. Very loving, very cuddly, very sweet. But I walk yeah. her every morning. We walk in the morning and I walk her about two miles in the neighborhood every morning because she needs that first walk to get her energy out. Yeah, of course. And I get, take her on a quick one in the afternoon, like kind of around this time, and then I walk her again late at night. So I walk her three times a day. And then... Yeah, uh, that, that'll get you some exercise right there. And then I hike 
and I just eat super clean. Like I'm really concerned about my gut health um, cause gut health has like such a effect about with your mental health, but also in general with like your body. So literally walking, hiking, but I used to do everything. I used to do boxing, Pilates, like going to dance classes, like hot yoga, yeah. like doing all this stuff. And then now people more than ever have been lately asking like, what are you doing for working out? You look so good. You look so <laughs> fit. And now, I feel, and now I feel different. Cause it's like, you know, I used to tell people, oh, well, like I go to boxing once a week. I do Pilates yeah. twice a week and like a hot yoga three times a week. And like, I'm like telling them, yeah, sometimes I do two a days and blah, 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 blah. And now I'm like, I just walk. You know? <laughs> sometimes I go on a hike like twice a month. I go on a hike twice a month and I just eat healthy. I don't know. It's working, uh, right? I mean, if you feel good, good, it's working. I do. I feel good. And I like, I feel like I look good. And a lot of people are asking and I'm like, yeah, but when, when it was open more, cause they've been kind of back and forth opening and closing right. but like, this class that I would love to go to. It's on Monday nights it's called grooves. So it's not choreographed per se, yeah. but for one hour straight, you are like dancing high energy and he'll just do like a four count and repeat it. You know, so it'll be like a simple move and it'll just be like a four count and he's just repeating it. <laughs> Eight, you know eight times and then yeah another move and you're drenched in sweat you're I bet. Sweat. like because it's an hour straight of doing this and it's doing he's doing it to like hip-hop music and r&b music and he'll slow it down for like five minutes and then go right back oh, up my wife would love that and you are me and my girlfriend used to go and we would be dripping in sweat we would leave like sticky in the car and it was it's just but it's fun it's such like a fun yeah. feel-good class and and just good energy. I would take heels classes sometimes, which is choreographed. And those were kind of more fun too. Cause the teacher that we would go to was- I've really heard cool. of heels. Yeah, it was like a fun teacher. So she was doing it to like a fun trendy song that was like upbeat and happy. And so I was doing that for a while too. I've only since COVID, I've only been to two. So yeah. I'm, I'm not doing very good. They, at that all. could be, that could be a good YouTube show. So it's, yeah. It's you and I traveling around and doing different workouts, right? So obviously, I'm sure you'll be able to handle all of them. anything that requires dance movement or anything. I'll, yeah. it'll be ridiculous, and oh, I'll be terrible. But that'll be the show. Also, so it'll, it'll, it'd be really good to do a show where it's traveling around and doing the different. So, like, if it was in Arizona, it would be going to the heights that they have in Arizona, and then if it's yeah. And then if it's going to Virginia, it's literally doing the whitewater rafting and doing like those, doing the extreme sports, like people watching me thinking I cannot do this extreme sport. And then I go and I do this. Extreme and then you sport. go do it. Oh, yeah. There you go. See, there's a show. We can just put them all together. We'll do things where we're surprisingly good at them. Like it'll shock people that we can actually do them. But we'll do things, some things that I'm good at, some things that you're good. And then maybe some that we're not so good. But that'll be funny. I feel like I could honestly get funding for this too. I feel like if I pitch this, I could actually like fund it and like get Let's do it. Like a Netflix. I'm ready right now. Yeah, just a Netflix to like have it already. I feel like honestly, I could, I could do it. So somebody needs to be doing it. it needs I, to, I think us. When I say somebody, I mean us. I know there needs to be some like fun authenticity, like something entertaining for people to watch. It's just like a very lighthearted and super fun and sporty. See, so you got, you've got, you know, this. Uh, West Coast personality it's, has all these talents, and then you got this kind of you know your average guy podcaster. <laughs> together. Oh my goodness! It's, it's a hit. It's a hit. <laughs> yeah, it's a hit. Do you okay? It's and, and then I'm gonna let you go. Do you have a favorite alcoholic beverage? Oh yeah, well it's wine. Yeah, I kind of figured that. Did you do the um like the uh the Zoom wine cocktail hours during COVID? No, I didn't. No, at all, none at all. I just I just like love wine. I'm not I've never been big on drinking liquor. Uh if I do, I do love like a tequila based drink, but I So it's like a are you like a red wine? Yeah, like red wine and that is what I consistently drink. And people are always like, I feel like whatever, whatever you do, somebody always has some kind of like comment about what you do. Like yeah. no matter what it is, it doesn't really matter. Like we're just humans and we're just hardwired to just like comments 
<laughs> it can't help it. How we feel about everything, you know, just who we are. But like anywhere I go, I drink, you know, red wine and my girlfriends will be having, you know, vodka sodas and whatever they're having. Yeah. And the, the, the comments, the 100% of the time, oh my God, you're having a glass of red wine. Like ugh, I would drink red wine, but it just like, it puts me to sleep. Like I'd be so <laughs> Oh my god! It just puts me to sleep. I'll be—I don't know how you're drinking red wine and being social. And I'm like, it's supposed to be really good for you, like a little bit. Yeah, and I'm like, honestly, two glasses, and I'm like complimenting everyone. I'm like, hey, how you doing? Oh my god, you look good. You look so. I love your outfit. You're looking. Yeah, that's pretty lightweight though. Two glasses. That's pretty. Yeah, two glasses, and I'm like this social like commenting like and I'm it's like a smooth like I'm not because you know how sometimes people drink alcohol and they're just like yeah like a party yeah mine's like more of like a sophisticated I'm like hey <laughs> how's it going like I just become this like like a like a mom or something I don't know when I become I become this like mom that's like complimenting everyone I'm like oh it's so good to see you oh my god give me a hug we'll have to get lunch sometime it'll be <laughs> Like I become this like woman, like this like woman. You get classy when you drink. Yeah, I get classy drunk, and I become like super animated and just very complimentary, and yeah, that's <laughs> it's fun. Exactly. Yeah, what about you? What's yours? <laughs> well, Kara, thank you so much. This this has been so much fun. I've had the best time. No, before we go, what's your favorite alcohol? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, I, you did say that. You said what's yours, and I just ignored you. It's terribly yeah, rude. Of so okay, so so I'm I'm so I've got um, I'm celiac, so I can't do uh, gluten, so I have to avoid most of the darker alcohols. Although I can yeah. do rum, so normally I, it's either tequila or rum. That's the two I normally stick to. I thought you were going to. And, and, and I don't like the cheap stuff. It's got to be the good stuff. It's, uh, it's got to be the good stuff. I thought you were going to tell me beer. I thought you were going to be a beer man. All no, the no, way. can't drink beer. I can do. It sounds terrible. They do have gluten-free beer, but it's made out of like sorghum and buckwheat. Who wants that? Nobody wants that. That doesn't sound very good. No, it sounds terrible. No, no. Well, it's, uh, it will be considered an occasion for me to come visit. So when I come visit, I will have to kill with you because that's an occasion. Oh, yeah. I'll, get, I'll bring out the good stuff. Top shelf. So that'll be, it's an occasional drink for me. So I will have tequila. So we okay. will do when, when I come and visit. Well, and then we can do the, you know, we can do the sophisticated wine dinner. I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm not, I'm not like my, like my wife, she's more worldly, you know, she drinks the cabs and she likes it very dry. I, I'm more of a sweet wine type of guy, but. My kind of woman. Yeah. Woman. Yeah. She, the drier, the better. She loves it. But it's kind of like what I found. It's kind of like coffee. You know, when you first taste coffee, it's terrible. But the more you drink it, you kind of, you kind of like it. So I think if I if I put the time in, I could become a wine drinker. I just I the time. Wine man. Yeah, You'll, you can stick with like the Pinot Grigios and the, the Sauv Blancs. Well, that's right. right, and I can do those, you yeah. know, because they're not they're not as dry. I didn't know that. To me, it was just bitter. You know, it's just I didn't I just didn't. But I guess it's dry. Yeah, I need something that's not as dry. No, well, my boyfriend he doesn't like red wine. He doesn't like alcohol at all. He doesn't drink alcohol first and foremost, but he likes exactly what you like and i like exactly what your wife likes so this, this oh there you go bring him this can work out perfectly this could be the perfect little this could be the perfect combination where we like oh, yeah. have a little date wine night and you guys are both going to be drinking sweet stuff and me and your wife will be drinking that's right yes <laughs> yeah there you, oh that's a perfect date night all right so okay what what's your what's your meal are you i mean do you do you eat meat are you a vegetarian? What's your what's your meal? I don't eat meat, but I'm not a vegetarian. I'm a pescatarian. Pescatarian, so okay. So you do fish, right? Yes, I do fish, and I am not like a stickler about dairy either. Yeah. Uh, so, but I do eat. I mean, I generally eat pretty healthy. But like anything that's like kind of I guess comfort food type stuff that my mom will make, like for Thanksgiving, we're going to be having. Sweet potatoes, mashed sweet potatoes with like the, the marshmallows on top. Mini oh, marshmallows. Yeah. Only way to make them. Yeah. And then mac and cheese. My mom makes amazing, like this like thick, cheesy mac and cheese. So that like as far as like comfort foods go and like cornbread, my mom makes insane cornbread. Ooh. 
My mom makes insane cornbread. She's an amazing cook, first of all, this woman. But my mom makes the best cornbread and chili. She's just, yeah, she's oh. she makes vegetarian chili for me. But I need I need to hang out with your mother. Oh, I love she's some cornbread. Incredible cook, incredible cook, and she makes it. You yeah. might just have to bring all of them. Just bring Everyone. them all. <laughs> Road trip over. It'll be a family <laughs> road trip to West Virginia. I'll tell you this: if you fly to West Virginia, chances are it's gonna you're, you'll have a layover in Atlanta, so you can check that one off your list too. I might do that. There you go. Okay. Okay. I might do that. <laughs> okay, so so a couple things before you go. Um, first one: is there anything that you have upcoming that we can kind of keep an eye out for you, other than the Orville, because we know that. One. Yeah, Orville season three, my poetry book will be coming out soon and I will start, I've been so bad about releasing music, but I will be releasing music again. So those are like probably the three top things at the moment. I do have a movie coming out next year. I'm unsure when, I know it's still in editing right now, so I have no idea when. So, but that will, everybody will see it when it comes out. It'll, it'll, All right. All right. We don't have a title yet or anything for it? Uh, the distributors might be changing the name, so I don't even want to say a name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should have myself don't you get want. yourself in trouble. What, yeah. What's the genre? Thriller. Ooh. Thriller. Are you the villain? I'm not. <laughs> I'm the victim. I am a victim. There are a few victims. Oh. Victim. So I have a movie that is coming out next year. Yeah, my poetry book will be coming out soon, and I will start releasing music again. So those. That and is then awesome. You got so, so much. That's a yeah. lot. Yeah. That's a lot. All right. Yeah. Okay. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you for for a small favor because this okay. will help me out with the, the promotion. All right. So if you're willing, yes. if you can just if you can just say you say your name and just say you're watching two opinions. Uh, this is and you're watching two opinions. That's all I need. All right. Hey you guys, this is Kira Santoro, and you are watching two opinionated. Hey, that's pretty good. Thank you. I, I think you might have a future. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, last one. This is an important one. Um, where can we find you on social media? Uh, okay, perfect. So, yeah, you can find me on social media across all my social media platforms, my Instagram, my Twitter, my YouTube, Facebook, all at Kira Santoro. Yeah, pretty easy. Pretty My easy. music on Spotify is just Kira, just K Y R A, Kira. Oh, really? How'd you manage that? I I don't know, cause I I I, I wanted like a degree of separation. I was like, music, I'm just gonna like create a vibe, Kira. Yeah, I'm just surprised that there wasn't some bozo out there that had already. There was another used. Kira, but I there's like multiple, but I overtook as the one that had. Oh the most so, so you didn't have to put like the kira no no nope. that's pretty good I that's pretty good. and i i don't want to i don't want to disparage the other kira. <laughs> nice. I, I shouldn't have called him bozo <laughs> no music is music it's relative it's, it's a subjective to the listener so that's exactly right that's exactly right Sorry. all right yeah. kira hold hold on one second all right so that was the wonderful talented Kira Santoro I I knew she was into a lot of different uh things and she's even busier than I thought it, I, I don't know how she keeps up with all of that and a poetry writer too that's that's amazing that's amazing had such a good time uh speaking with her hope you guys enjoyed that you know she put up with uh with my shenanigans uh a lot of fun a lot of fun it's really uh really great can't wait to see the new season of the orville i know she'll be uh, terrific in that hope you guys enjoy thank you so much for choosing us week over week really appreciate that if you haven't done so yet please please go to youtube meistercon pod give us a like and subscribe that would really help us out if you could uh, also check out our website meistercon.com there's 300 or so episodes available on there Guarantee you'll find somebody or something that you like. So check that out. There's also a terrific, funny blog from Brett. He's such a talented writer, so please check that out. And it'll let you know if we're doing any shows or anything uh, is going on at the studio. So you can find that out as well. Thank you guys so much. Until next time. Bye, everybody.